Welcome to Standing Firm Tribulation Radio, broadcasting the truth in the last days, giving commentary to the latest news, encouraging the faithful remnant through God's Word to help you stand firm. This is a worldwide ministry to all of God's children, of which many are currently undergoing intense persecution while others are facing an onslaught of demonic activity, extreme weather, and catastrophic disasters. You're listening to Tribulation Radio. We will be back in less than a minute after Paula Disbro introduces our show with heavenly music in a short music video. Remember to stay tuned for later in the show when Paula sings a different song each week to the glory of God. Stand firm, stand firm. We are safe within God's loving hands. Keep on trusting all His sovereign plans. Stand firm in Him. Stand firm, stand firm. Keep on walking in God's holy ways. He will give His strength to face each day. The name of our show today is The Faithful Remnant Seek to Know Their God. The one thing missing among God's people these days, in the midst of their many trials and tribulations, is the seeking of your people after their God. They seek a great many things, but they don't prepare their hearts to seek after their God. This is tragic. They seek the knowledge, but miss knowing their God. They study all the manuscripts and understand a great many things about the history, the languages, and the culture of biblical times, but miss knowing their God. They banner back and forth in their study groups and have heated arguments about certain words and meanings, but have missed knowing their God. They know all the church doctrines and have the ability to recite their systematic theology and can discuss the finer points of their religion but have missed knowing their God. We will discover together how the faithful remnant seek to know their God. The devil has blinded humanity and all its different religions from really knowing God. He has led them to discover and know things about their different gods, but has blinded them from knowing the one true God. The Bible says the God of this world has blinded the minds of those who believe not the gospel of Jesus Christ. See 2 Corinthians 4.4. 4. Satan has led them down the path of learning about their individual religions and producing works of righteousness as defined by their sect. He cares little that you learn things about your God. He just doesn't want you to know your God. He does not want you to have an intimate relationship with God. So if necessary, He will even instill fear into the hearts of those who seek to know their God. Unfortunately, many who call upon the name of Christ are not unlike the people of the ancient mountain who did not want God to speak to them directly. They were not interested in coming into His presence, lest they die. See Exodus 20.19 In the same way, we have a whole generation of believers who are not really interested in knowing their God intimately and are no longer interested in or think it possible to hear His voice. The faithful remnant seek to know their God. The Bible says a word fitly or aptly spoken is like apples of gold and the pitchers of silver. Proverbs 25.11 Well, the aptly spoken word today is seek. Seek the Lord. If you seek the Lord properly, then we will come to know Him intimately. On the other hand, if our hearts are not properly prepared, then we will be doing evil in the sight of the Lord. 
The Bible says, And he did evil, because he prepared not his heart to seek the Lord. 2 Chronicles 12.14 To prepare our hearts, we must truly be on the path to transformation. Let's be clear. This is not evolution. It's transformation. Humanity is not evolving. If anything, humanity is regressing from its original created state, its original design by our Creator. Whereas transformation is growing, changing, and becoming more like our original state of perfection and innocence. If we truly want to seek after our God, we must be on the path of transformation, or what the ancients referred to as the way. There is no shortcut. We cannot whip ourselves up into a spiritual frenzy, becoming ecstatic, and attempting to come into God's presence without first preparing our hearts. The key to preparation is faith or belief that Christ would do exactly what He said He would do, to give us life, a bountiful life, in Him. Of course, if we don't believe that, then transformation is quite impossible. And without transformation, knowing God is also impossible. So let's start at the beginning. The Bible says, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. A superior, God, has extended His grace to an inferior, us, by giving us the faith needed in order to believe as a gift. We approach the mystery of godliness that we can't, but He can, and if we won't, He will. To simplify this further, when we come to the cross believing that Christ died for all our sins, past, present, and future, then we believe that the slate is clean. We have been rescued from the power of sin and the devil, but we can't stop here. We also believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the grave. He has paved a new way, giving us a brand new life in Christ, a clean slate and a new life. Praise God! The Bible says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. 2 Corinthians 5.17 If we truly believe all this, then you are being transformed as you put off the old life and put on the new life in Christ. As we put our complete trust in Christ, we can. Then the indwelling Spirit transforms our lives. He will. We all without fail know the old life. We know the things we should not dwell on, the things we should not do. But how about the new life in Christ? It is much more than our religious duties. Simply put, it is coming into the presence of our God through Christ who has given us the indwelling Spirit. Yes, we must come up to the mountain and leave the valley of the frenzied behavior of those seeking their false gods down below. Fear not, God has already given us the grace, unmerited favor needed for walking in this new life. We will, especially in the beginning, may say and do things that feel uncomfortable and perhaps a bit frightening. But we must step out on faith, believing that God is with us through the Spirit transforming us. For the unbelieving world, it is a very frightening thing to turn the other cheek, to go the extra mile, and to love your enemies. Yes, it takes a great deal of faith, but remember, that faith was given to us through grace. Step by step, we will learn how to forgive those who have sinned against us, to bless those who have cursed us, and pray for those who have persecuted us. Through repentance, confession, and humility, we the faithful remnant seek our God through the indwelling Spirit. Yes, as God's children, we learn to listen to the indwelling Spirit. We don't ignore His nudges or His convictions. Remember, it is He that is transforming us. We don't ask Him to step into a different room so that we can do something we know that God would not approve. We never allow fallen man to explain away the clear teachings of His scriptures made alive through the indwelling Spirit. If the Word says He has given us everything we need for life and godliness, then we believe it. See 2 Peter 1.3. 3. 
If the Word says that we are a new creature and the old things are passed away, then we believe it. See 2 Corinthians 5.17. If the Word says that Jesus came to give us life and that we might have it more abundantly, then we believe it. See John 10.10. 10. If the Word says we can participate in the divine nature, then we believe it. See 2 Peter 1.4. When we seek our God, we do so in faith, believing all that He has taught us through the indwelling Spirit. We approach God in humility and faith with a clean heart and a quiet meditation. A proud, faithless, unrepentant sinner that's undisciplined will not know God. On the other hand, we will enjoy the intimacy with our God. Then we can finally say, we have moved beyond just knowing about our God to actually knowing God. Amen. Please join me in prayer. Good morning, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Lord, for speaking to us in various ways. At times, we have experienced hearing just one word that you have impressed deeply within our hearts, a word that stays with us as we roll it over and over again in our minds until we discover how you want us to use that word. They say that a word aptly spoken is like apples of gold and a pitchers of silver. Well, the word spoken is seek or seekers. You have shown us the one thing missing among your people these days in the midst of their many trials and tribulations is seeking of your people for their God. They seek a great many things, but they don't prepare their hearts to seek after you, their God. This is so tragic. They have become like people on the ancient mountain who said, You speak to God for us, for they feared to come close into His presence. Teach your people how to repent of their many sins. Humble their hearts and seek after you, O Lord, to come fully into your presence. We pray this in the blessed name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Bible says, reading from the King James Version, And he did evil, because he prepared not his heart to seek the Lord, 2 Chronicles 12.14. I'll be back after a 30-second station break. We all know that Jesus Christ came to save the sinner and give them a new life in Him. But what many of us have forgotten is the true nature of sin. Yes, we have all sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But what is sin? We will all agree to disobey any of His commandments is sin. But how many can you quote? You might say, If I love God and my fellow man, then I have fulfilled His commandments. But don't forget that He has given us over 127 commands in the New Testament alone to show us how to love God and how to love one another. On our own, we cannot obey. But with God, all things are possible. Not only has He promised to save us, but give us the ability to obey all of His commandments and trust Him alone. This is all by the grace of God, not by works lest any man should boast. This grace comes through faith, believing in Jesus Christ who is the true Son of the living God, who died, was buried, and raised on the third day, opens a door to a new life in Him. This is a life where all of our sins are forgiven and we are made into a brand new creation where old things pass away. From the very first day we are given the gift of the Holy Spirit to lead and guide us into all truth, producing every manner of spiritual fruit. This eternal life misses the sting of death and ushers us into His glorious presence. This free gift is given to those who are called into His kingdom. Dear friend, if you have not yet accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord by placing all of your trust in Him to make you into a new creation and forgive you of all your sins, then you can do that right now in the privacy of your own home. Come to Jesus right now confessing and repenting of your sins, telling Him that you believe that He is the Son of the living God and the only path to salvation, asking Him to take full control of your life as Lord. Our only featured vocalist for the day is our own Paula Dispro, singing a most amazing song that really puts feet to our message. I love the fact that she is accompanied by only a guitar. 
which is reminiscent of those early believers sitting around, perhaps, an open fire, listening to a guitarist, and a very spiritually gifted vocalist singing the truth about the beauty of our transformation. The fact that Christ makes us into a beautiful new creation. Now let's be blessed together as we listen to Paula Disbrell sing, You Are Beautiful in Jesus. You are beautiful, so beautiful in Jesus. Praise God for His lovely work in you. You're a glorious masterpiece of His own creation. His grace has made you new. Do not listen to the voices who say that you are worthless. Voices of fear and of dark despair. They will make you doubt the truth about who you are. In Jesus, He loves you as you are. God gave new life. His blood paid the price. Old things have passed away. You were his plan before time began. Love made a new way. You are beautiful, so beautiful in Jesus. Praise God for his lovely work in you. You're a glorious masterpiece of his own creation. His grace has made you new. You are beautiful, so beautiful in Jesus. Praise God for His lovely work in you. You're a glorious masterpiece of His own creation. His grace has made you. I would like to invite you to visit my online bookstore today for one of these incredible books. Final Warning offers evidence that the beast is already building the global city of Revelation. Stand Firm helps lay a foundation for the Christian soldier to overcome the wiles of the devil. Guiding Principles for Biblical Counseling is a very practical book for the layman and the professional. Revelation Truth is a collection of all my timeless articles written to help God's children stand firm. 
Teresa Wiggins has a loving heart for the orphans, the widows, and the poor, and invites you to visit her website and make a tax-deductible donation today for one of these precious children. These are only two of the many hungry and deprived children that could use your help. The little girl and boy are from Uganda, Africa. Make your tax-deductible donation today using the PayPal button. Thank you for your help. Thank you for listening to Tribulation Radio. I pray that God has richly blessed your listening experience. Please help us spread the truth by telling your friends and family about Tribulation Radio. May our God bless and protect you until we meet again. Mm -hmm.